Hey guys, today's topic is Do I get soy books if I eat soy? So many men ask me this question and that's why I decided to address it. First of all, I want to clarify why men should start looking like women if they eat soy. Well, soy contains compounds that are called isoflavones and these compounds have a structure that is similar to the structure of estrogen. Estrogen is a female sexual hormone and these compounds can also bind estrogen receptors. That's why the idea emerged if I get too much of these compounds into my body as a man then my estrogen levels will increase, my testosterone will drop and I will start looking like a woman. So, let's look at the research literature. Indeed, there have been research studies that have shown that if animals consume soy products, they get a negative effect from it. So by negative effect, I mean their testosterone levels drop. But what for some people may be a negative effect, like for the guys who left, for other men can be actually a positive effect because lower testosterone levels were associated with a reduced risk of prostate cancer. And actually men who are suffering of prostate cancer try to reduce their testosterone levels. That's why there's also some research on this topic. Back to animal research. If you feed baby monkeys soy formula, their testosterone levels decrease. However, the thing is, monkeys are able to convert these isoflavones into compounds that are even more potent, so that get a higher effect from it, which isn't the same case for humans or even human babies, because here we speak actually about monkey babies. But if you feed the soy formula to pig babies, they are fine, because pigs are more similar to humans and they can't produce this other compound. Okay, as you can see here, there are big differences between species. That's why if you read some articles on the internet and they reference research studies that were done on animals, you can't transfer it to humans because you have no idea if a research study on humans would have found the same thing because we aren't animals. And the second thing is that many research studies on animals actually use doses that are super high. So humans wouldn't eat that much soy. Or even, these research studies just used isolated isoflavones and not even soy. That's why I think that research studies that were performed on animals don't give strong evidence if soy is good or bad for humans. So, let's go to human studies. And now again the question, can men get soy books? And the answer is yes, they can. There was a case study on a 60-year-old man who drank about 3 liters of soy milk a day. That equals about 100 grams of protein or 300 to 360 grams of isoflavones. And he got soy books. Just to put it into perspective and look at Asian population, for example Japanese people, they're pretty healthy, right? So they consume on average 6 to 11 grams of soy protein per day, which contains 25 to 50 grams of isoflavones. And this guy who got boobs consumed way too much. And the second point is that the man was actually 60 years old. And as men get older, their testosterone levels decline. So the isoflavones he ingested may have had kind of a higher impact on him than they would have on a young man because a young man would have had more testosterone and a better hormonal balance. When this man stopped drinking soy milk, his estrogen levels went down and everything went back to normal. There was a similar study with men who suffered on prostate cancer. They were on average 69 years old and in order to treat their prostate cancer they started consuming a high dose of isoflavones. Actually, one group consumed 450 milligrams a day and the other group 900 milligrams a day. Just as a side note, 900 milligrams of isoflavones a day corresponds to about 260 grams of soy protein or about two kilograms of tofu or about eight liters of soy milk. 
So it's a lot. It's not a dose a normal person would just eat. It's something you have to take as a medication. So three of this elderly men got uh, breasts. However, two of this men had already issues before they started the study because they have taken some medication or herbs against prostate cancer. And this medication or herbs had the side effects, this breast enlargement. And then there's probably just one man who received such a high dose of isoflavones that actually developed this symptoms. Which means that it is pretty individual if a person who consumes such high doses of soy or soy isoflavones, if the person is susceptible and if the person will develop uh, some characteristics that are typically female. There was a meta-analysis that examined the effect of soy protein and isoflavones on the reproductive hormones in men. And they actually concluded that neither soy nor soy protein have a negative effect on testosterone levels. A meta-analysis is actually a great type of study because a meta-analysis looks at many, many different research studies and evaluates the general risk. And of course, there are always some outliers, some studies that show that if you eat soy, you get lower testosterone levels. But it is important to look at the collective evidence. Another thing that is important is to consider the limitations of each research study. Like this one, for example, it has shown that consuming 56 grams of soy protein a day decreases testosterone. But if you actually look at the research data, like in this graph, you see that one of the subjects was a huge outlier. His testosterone levels weren't in the norm. His testosterone levels went like through the roof. They were abnormally high. And then during the study, they decreased. Well, what can be the reason that his testosterone levels were that high? I can just speculate. So my hypothesis is that this guy was taking steroids. And then when the research study started, he discontinued using them and then his testosterone levels dropped because this testosterone level is incredibly high. And I think this guy is an outlier and one should remove him from the data set. That's why I've extracted the data from this graph and ran an analysis myself. And then I've seen that there is no significant difference between the testosterone levels at the baseline and the testosterone levels after the guys were taking 56 grams of soy protein for four weeks. Another thing is that the study wasn't controlled. There was no control group, there was no placebo control, there wasn't anything. So we can't know what would have happened if there would be another group that would have taken other kind of protein powder or even just a sugar supplement as a placebo. That's why we can't really say if this decline in testosterone levels was because of the soy protein supplementation or something else. I know many of the people who watch this video are lifters. So you want to become stronger and bigger and build muscle. That's why I looked also at the studies that examined the effect of soy protein supplementation on strength training adaptations. So there was this research study where 20 grams of soy protein were taken for two weeks and then the guy went and trained. And what the researchers found was that actually soy protein decreased the response to resistance training when it comes to testosterone levels. The testosterone levels were higher in the carbohydrate placebo group and in the whey protein group. And in the soy protein group they were lower. So basically what the study suggests is that soy protein may have a negative effect on testosterone levels after resistance training. The estrogen levels were not affected. Then there was this research study where they have taken 2.5 times that much. They have taken 50 grams of soy protein supplement or other uh, protein supplements for 12 weeks and trained and their testosterone levels were assessed. And here in this study, there was no significant difference between adaptations to resistance training when it comes to lean body mass and no significant effect on testosterone levels. However, in this study, they have taken the measurements 
uh, in fasted state and not after workout. And we have also seen in the previous study that in the fasted state, the testosterone level was about the same to the control groups. So we don't know what would happen if in the second research study, where they have taken 50 grams of soy protein, we would have measured uh, testosterone levels after the workout. However, as uh, lean body mass was measured and how much muscle they gained after the 12 weeks resistance training program, and there were no significant differences, what everyone wants in the end is gaining muscle and all the groups gained the same amount of muscle. And there is actually the third research study that suggested that soy protein supplementation is beneficial for strength and body composition. However, I don't really trust this research study because it has sponsorship bias. The supplementation group was eating a soy yogurt after workout and this research study was actually funded by the company that uh, made the soy yogurt. And it's not the only issue. There are a few other issues. And the methods, when I read them, it wasn't really clear to me how much of the yogurt they ate. If they got at the end 13 gram protein or 26 gram protein in total after the workout. And what is even more important, there were two groups. One did supplement after training uh, with soy yogurt and the other didn't. And the thing is then the energy and protein intake is probably different between the groups because the soy yogurt supplementation group ate something extra. So they had extra calories, they had extra protein. And this means that had, they had more energy to build muscle. That's why I don't really like the study. Sadly, there isn't too much data on soy protein supplementation after workout. And the data we have isn't super amazing and often a bit confusing. That's why I want to give you my take on this topic. First of all, soy consumption. One serving of soy corresponds to about 8 grams soy protein in most research studies. So how much soy can you eat? One serving a day isn't a problem at all. That's what the Japanese people eat and they're pretty healthy. Usually what I recommend is three servings a day, which is about 24 grams of soy protein. I think it's really safe. Probably, if we look at the collectivity of research findings, that about six servings a day would be safe as well, like 48 grams of protein. I wouldn't go as high as 12 servings a day, which co would correspond to 100 grams protein. That is what this man consumed who got breasts. But again, it is about the individual and individual variability. So if he got breasts, it doesn't mean you will get breasts. So if you are a vegan bodybuilder and you think you need to eat that, that much soy, which many bodybuilders do, for many people like 100 gram protein or soy protein a day is too much. It's more than they can imagine to eat. But I know vegan bodybuilders who eat this amount. So if you are a vegan strength athlete who eats so, so much soy and you realize that you start getting breasts, then either you should stop eating it because it seems like you're sensitive to the soy isoflavones or if you're a competitive powerlifter, you can take advantage of it because then when you bench press, you don't need to lower the bar that much and you can push more weight. So take the advantage of disadvantages. What about soy protein supplementation, especially around workouts? There is only one research study that has shown that soy protein supplementation around workouts may be not beneficial because it lowers testosterone. So it's not enough evidence because it's just one research study. But just to be on the safe side, I would just say just don't consume any soy protein after your workout. There are so many other vegan protein powders out there like rice protein, so, uh, pea protein. Why do you need to consume soy? Uh, in general, if you have already tempeh, tofu, maybe soy milk, soy yogurt in your diet, then there's absolutely no point to get soy protein as well, because what I usually recommend is creating a more balanced diet using a variety of protein sources, just that you don't get any sensitivities in the future because you overeat on one protein source. Uh, for this reason, I 
I myself, I usually use uh, rice and pea protein. So I don't use soy protein because I eat tempeh and tofu. I hope you liked this video. If you have any questions, please comment below. I will be happy to answer them. And if you think that someone could benefit from this information, please share it with him or her. It would be amazing. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, just hit the subscription button down below and subscribe. And see you very soon.